chemist Gerald Smith shared some inspiring information about the work of George Washington Carver. But there's so much more to the life and contributions of the peanut man. Let's learn more. George Washington Carver was born in the 1860s in Missouri during the Civil War. He and his mother Mary were stolen from the Carver farm where they were enslaved. Baby George was returned to the farm, but his mother was not. Soon, the Civil War and slavery were over. George and his brother were raised by Sue and Moses Carver on the farm. George was sickly as a boy, so he did chores on the farm that didn't require the hardest physical work, like churning butter, planting corn, or tending to the horses. On the farm, George learned to use all of the resources available and not to waste anything. They got honey from their beehives and made their own shoes and clothing. They made dyes to color clothing from the bark of trees and medicine from plants. George was great at crafts like carving and crocheting and made his own knitting needles from turkey feathers. His favorite thing was being in nature, his most important classroom. George was curious about plants and animals, and after he naturally knew what to do to revive his neighbor's dying ferns or rose bushes, he became known as the plant doctor. He even planted a secret flower garden. While helping someone with plants, he noticed art at her home. George taught himself to draw and paint using twigs for brushes and homemade dyes for paint. George got a hand-me-down spelling book, and the more he studied it, the more disappointed he got that the closest school to him only allowed white children. He was determined to learn, and at the age of 12, with the blessings of the Carvers and his brother, George moved to Neosho, a nearby town with a school for blacks. He carried all of his belongings in a bandana. George was finally able to go to school and study. He did chores for Andrew and Mariah Watkins in exchange for a room and meals. Mariah was a healer, and George helped her search for the plant she needed. Aunt Mariah recognized George's intelligence and told him, You must learn all you can and then go out into the world and give your learning back to our people that's so starving for a little learning. George referred to himself as Carver's George, but Aunt Mariah told him that he was no one's property, so he began to call himself George Carver. He added Washington in high school to distinguish himself from another boy with the same name. George drew this picture of the house and school in Neosho. After just a year, George learned all he could at the school and left. He lived in Kansas for 10 years. George applied to college and was accepted, but when he showed up for class, he was told Negroes were not allowed. In 1888, he enrolled in Simpson College in Iowa, where he studied painting. A teacher recognized his gift for plants and convinced him to transfer to Iowa Agricultural College and Model Farm to study horticulture, the science of raising plants and flowers. George earned his bachelor's degree in 1894 and went on to earn a master's degree and become a professor of botany. This is one of his scientific drawings. Booker T. Washington, principal of a school for blacks, Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, convinced George to come work for the school to help teach blacks to lift themselves out of poverty. It would be his first time living in the South. Remembering what Aunt Mariah told him about teaching his people, George headed to Tuskegee with some of his plants, paintings, and his new microscope that was a gift from people in Iowa. During his trip South, George noticed terrible, dry, cracked soil few vegetables growing, and skinny cows and mules. Years of growing only cotton and very little nutritious food had taken its toll. Hunger was everywhere. George had his work cut out for him. At Tuskegee, George was charged with creating an agricultural program, teaching, research, and managing the Institute's orchard, beehives, livestock, dairy, farms, landscaping, and an agricultural experiment station. He always wore a flower to remind him of the beauty and bounty of nature. George's only equipment for his lab was his prized microscope. So he used bottles, jars, pots, and pans to analyze the soil and study the environment. Carver began to teach his students and local farmers about the harm being done to the land. 
He taught the importance of planting nutrient-rich foods like sweet potatoes, black-eyed peas, and peanuts that would make people and the land healthier. He reached out to the community through Tuskegee's Farmers Conference and a monthly Farmers Institute with cooking demonstrations and meal planning. They even had a movable school, the Jessup Agricultural Wagon. Carver stressed the importance of not wasting anything. Save everything. From what you have, make what you want. He taught making fertilizer with animal manure and compost. He also taught that beauty was important and gave away seeds for flower gardens. He shared many of his lessons in simple bulletins that were easy for the average person to understand. Carver finally had a working lab at Tuskegee where he experimented with different crops, especially sweet potatoes and peanuts. He became the director of research. In time, with Carver's help, grass and so many other things grew on the 2,000 acres of Tuskegee Institute, which had been swampland when he arrived. Many years later, Tuskegee Institute became Tuskegee University. Carver experimented with different ways to cook sweet potatoes and came up with different recipes. He demonstrated how sugar, starch, flour, vinegar, molasses, and ink could all be made from the sweet potato. And he taught how flour, meal, cereals, and dyes could be made from peanuts. He became known as the wizard of the goober and the yam and the peanut man. Carver became a sought after speaker at conferences. In 1921, he was invited to Washington to speak to Congress on behalf of the United Peanut Growers Association. He spoke about all of the potential of the peanut to make products including candies, milk, ice cream, fruit punches, oils, instant coffee, face cream, cheeses, and even mock meats. After that, the peanut growers were successful in getting the support they sought from the government. He tried to market several plant-based products, but none of them were particularly successful. In the 1920s and 30s, he researched the soybean and studied how grains, vegetables, and fruits could be used to replace oil for fuel. He believed every human need could be addressed by things that grow. Carver saved almost all of his salary during his 40 years at Tuskegee and gave $30,000 to start the George Washington Carver Foundation. The foundation provided scholarships for young people studying science and created a museum of artifacts from Carver's life and research as well as his paintings and crafts. The museum opened in 1941. George Washington Carver passed away on January 5, 1943. Congress passed legislation for a national monument to him in a park in Diamond, Missouri. It was the first national monument to a person who was not a president and the first of the National Park Service dedicated to an African American. There were many honors to his life, including his likeness on a postage stamp and several buildings named after him. Some people criticize him for not outwardly protesting segregation. However, he was a man connected to the earth, which was deeply connected to his faith. George Washington Carver built his legacy on how we can respectfully use nature's bounty to meet our needs and be self-sufficient. We are doing our best to relearn his lessons today. We got most of our information from this great book, George Washington Carver by Tanya Bolden. Check it out to learn more and see lots of pictures of George Washington Carver and his life. You can also do more of your own research. In honor of George Washington Carver, you can plant a garden or support local farmers, especially African American farmers. Recycle and reuse, make or fix something instead of buying new or just take a walk outside and appreciate the wonders of nature. See you next time.